Warm and cool colours, watercolour and ink, grove of trees. Create with me on my art journey. This week I created two similar watercolour and ink artworks of a row of trees. One piece is painted with warm colours and the other with cool. In a way you're going to see that the first painting looks quite a bit like autumn and the, and the second one looks quite a bit like spring as well. It's just the way the colours are going. So this time I did not just create one painting for my sketch journal, I actually created two uh, really pretty cards with original artwork. Um, I can use these cards for many occasions, perhaps to send to family or friends for their special days or celebrations. And the bonus is that I get to share my creations with others. The colour spectrum of seven colours of visible light in order are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet. These colours can be seen by the human eye. At the further red end comes infrared and at the further violet end we find ultraviolet both of which cannot be seen by us. The colour spectrum can be loosely divided into warm and cool colours. Warm and cool colours bring temperature to your work. Additionally, they can suggest mood as well. The warm colours are hot, spicy and suggest friction, danger and sex. The cool colours are restful and calming and suggest tranquility, peace and harmony. Using either a warm or a cool colour palette in your artwork will shift the mood of the piece even when the subject is the same as in our grove of trees. Your palette refers to the colours that you have chosen to use in a particular artwork. It's best to avoid using all the colours in your paint box. Instead, select a few colours that work well together, such as the warm colours of red, orange and yellow, or the cool colours of violet, indigo, blue and green. Let's have a closer look at warm and cool colours. In general, red is a hot colour. The warm colours are found at the red end of the spectrum. Warm colours are red, orange and yellow. In your paint palette, choose reds like Mars Red, Madder Lake or Cadmium Red. Select oranges like Burnt Orange, Cadmium Orange or Pyrrole Orange. And opt for yellows like Yellow Ochre, Hansa Yellow or Naples Yellow. In your coloured pencils, choose Alizarin Crimson, Scarlet Red, Deep Red, Pink Carmine, Orange Glaze and Cadmium Yellow. The cool colours. In general, blue is a cool colour. The cool colours are at the violet end of the spectrum and are violet, indigo, blue and green. Sometimes green can be considered as neutral because it does nestle between warm yellow and cool blue, but typically green is considered as a cool colour. In your cool paint palette, choose violets like Caput Mortem, Ultramarine Violet and some magentas. Select indigo. Pick blues like ultramarine blue, cobalt blue and tallow blue. Elect for greens like sap green, olive green and emerald green. In your coloured pencil palette, select may green, light cobalt turquoise, tallow blue, ultramarine, cobalt blue and violet. These colour names for the coloured pencils are all from the Faber-Castell Polychromos coloured pencils, but you can really find similar colours in your crayons too. And really, when you start out with art, you don't have to know the exact colour names, but rather let your instincts guide you towards using a limited palette of either warm or cool colours. Picasso's famous blue period is followed by his just as famous pink period, and it's all about mood. During his blue period, he was suffering from depression and during his pink period, he had found a woman to love and life was rosy. So this is my process about how I created these two cards. I painted my two groves of trees on separate cards. I used the Strathmore mixed media cards at 140 pounds, that's 300 grams per meter squared, size five inches by 6.7 eighths or... <laughs> 13.3 centimetres by 18.4, which come in envelopes in a box. So you buy the box, you've got 10 cards and 10 envelopes, which is great. And to create these cards, I also followed the process I've used before that you can see in detail in my St. Chad's Polton painting and my recent sketch journal work desk picture. I'll put links to those below. I began with a simple 2H pencil sketch of three trees and I'm working on two cards, as you can see. 
I added pen and ink over and then I gently erased the pencil marks, otherwise they will show through on the paint. I worked the pen on both of the cards. Next I gave a super light wash of watercolour paint, the first one with warm colours and the second one with cooler colours. So here I have the tree in the foreground in the red, because red is the one at the end of the spectrum, and then orange and yellow, and with the cool ones I have blue coming forward, green and lilac in the back. After they were both bone dry, I added more intense watercolour to the underside of the trees. I added the sky and foreground, still keeping in the colour palettes I had chosen. Again, let it dry, bone dry. Using coloured pencils in the same warm and cool palettes, I enhanced the depths and shadows in the grove here and there. So I'm adding a little bit of deeper colour underneath the tree and um, just on the, on the side where the shadow is, you can see that there. I'm just going in with, with some blues and greens and or lilacs there to enhance those. Next I went over with a with a black pen again just to add some more definition to the drawing because that's how I like my work to be and adding a little bit on the trunks of the trees there as you can see as well on the cooler version. And here are the actual completed artworks. The cards are standing up so you can see them both next to each other. You can take a final look there at um, these are the, the two cards that I had painted. These are the ones that we created here. And you can see just how dinky they really are. They're really lovely. I then went on to sign the bottom with my name and I added a date. Here are some final thoughts. That trees are normally greens. It seems that the cooler palette painting is better somehow because it has the green tree. And people have already commented to say that that picture looks better than the warmer palette because trees are green. It resonates with what we expect, that trees are green. So I may repeat this warm, cool exercise with something that can be either red or green. And I was thinking of maybe an apple or something, because you can get red apples and, of course, you can get green apples. So both the red and the green, the warm and the cool. So then a painting of a red apple and a painting of a green apple showing warm and cool tones. Both of those would be expected items to see as well. So... That's just something else to consider as well. That might be a future project that I'll be working on sometime later. So have you noticed, do you naturally gravitate towards a warm or a cool palette in your paintings? And finally, my gift to you. If you join my mailing list, link below, um, you will receive a free colouring page PDF download every time I write to you. At the moment, it's kind of like once a week, but it might be once every two weeks. And every time I drop an email your way, I do attach a complimentary colouring page so you can see more of the type of work I'm doing. And that is my gift for you. I'm Alison Hazel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.